Hello, this is Cheryl Wilson, and I'm back again to give you a studio chat to talk about 10 steps to start your art. Kind of like a pep talk in a way as opposed to just pure dirty steps but they were steps that I thought I'd share with you that I read periodically that help me uh, scheduling time in your day to spend time in your creative space doesn't mean you necessarily have to go in there and paint just spend time in there you could be like writing in your journal or even looking through your journals and straighten them up or painting in them or um, just um, cleaning up your um, paint area and organizing. It's something about touching your paint tubes. It's For most artists, it's very exciting. Looking at your art magazines or books, but spend time within your creative space. Two, don't worry about the outcome of your artwork because if you do, you are starting at the wrong place with the wrong mindset. I always tell other artists to enjoy the process and ensure you're staying loose. If you start with this mindset and you don't worry about the outcome, many times the process will be fun and you'll find that the, the creative juices that are created within your inner soul are helping you produce art that you really enjoy. It's like a donut and it's the same thing. If you start out in a very negative mindset, then everything that you do is bothersome and, and you just don't feel good about it and you're going to create negative art. Not that negative art doesn't turn out pretty or, or art that I've created when I've been angry, but that's not the most optimal situation in my opinion. Three, do at least one thing a day to inspire your soul. What does this mean? Um, I get up early in the morning and I'll turn on the TV with a cup of coffee <clears throat> and watch a YouTube channel, a video of some sort. Sometimes they're new um, artists that I watch and sometimes they're repetitive. Look at art on Pinterest. This is a great place to, to look at, or even on Instagram. They're, they're great places to kind of just look at art and just get inspired. There's so many times that I just want to hop out of bed and run to my studio and start painting. Go to a museum. Many times this is something that you can sit and you're in the mindset with other people that enjoy this type of environment. And again, it's, it's, it's like you can't wait till you get back to your studio to paint. Glance through your art books. I don't know how many times I've had splatters on my art books because I've opened the pages and I get excited and I think, oh, that's a color palette I want to use. And it just inspires me to pull out the paints and to get creative, whether it's on a sample study or to start a new painting. Um, looking through art books is a great way to get inspired. Take a walk and look at shapes or nature. Now, nature has become something that I've really enjoyed more lately, but taking a walk and just looking at the different grasses, the flowers, shapes of houses or mailboxes or how people have decorated their gardens, there's like a mental note that happens in your mind that in turn just helps formulate some inspiration in your art. Four, when you sit down to paint, don't compare yourself to anyone else. Once you go down this path, it's really hard to come back, so just don't go there. Comparing yourself to other artists, the reason why, the very main focal reason why, is that artist and you are in totally different places. You are in the 
spot in your journey that you are supposed to be in, whether it's the beginning, the middle, uh, you're a seasoned painter, you're going back to learn something new, you're where you need to be. And if you compare yourself to other artists, all that's going to do is get you frustrated. It's okay to look at other artists for inspiration, but don't compare their journey with yours. It's a totally different journey. You are on the journey that you are meant to be on. Five, schedule a Zoom call or go visit another artist and share your art or just talk about creative things. Whenever I've done this and I have friends around the world and local that something about it when you're talking to other artists, especially since my immediate family is not art bound. My husband is an engineer and my sister's a school teacher. And a lot of people around me are academia and they're not artists. So I have to schedule my time with other artists to be able to have that one-on-one -on -one, um, inspiring time with other people who think like me. Six, be kind to yourself. Now that sounds easy, but negative thoughts tend to pop up in our mind and you need to block negative thoughts as soon as they enter your creative space. I always say when you go through your art door into your, your space, your creative space, you turn around and you look at that inner critic and you go, okay, go away, go get a cup of coffee somewhere. I'm going in here to create. And many times you have to tell yourself to go away. And your old teachers, you are going in there with the purest form of your inner soul to create. And sometimes it takes a mindset to take the negative thoughts that loom in all of us and dispel them. Seven, another one that sounds easy, enjoy the journey. This time creating should be fun and not full of anxiety. If you don't enjoy the journey, why are you doing it? If you do enjoy the journey and you make time to express how you're enjoying the journey, then you'll find it is, um, it's like contagious. It's like a smile that you see on someone's face and it's, it, it makes you smile. When you have this mindset of enjoying the journey, then it will automatically start to dispel a lot of the negativity that tends to happen when we have self-doubt. Eight, keep a journal. Write down things that you love. Keep your journal next to you so when you think about something, you can write it down. Or if you see something. Now, I take a journal. I have a notebook in my purse that I take with me, especially if I'm waiting at a doctor's office or in the car for um, something at, at a light and I'm thinking of something. Always have a journal next to my bed. You never know when a creative thought is going to start to flow in your mind and you want to write it down. I get a lot of creative thoughts um, when I watch a, a good movie. I don't know why, but that's just a, a mind space that I'm in that I'm happy. And I get a lot of creative juices flowing at that time. And I always have paper and pen ready because I know there's going to be something I want to write down. Nine, think about joining a group on Facebook that does the type of art that you love or maybe something that you want to do. You don't even need to talk in the group, but being a part of it just inspires you. If you feel like it, share your art, but make sure it's a group that is a kind group. I always tell people that if you're in a group and you share your art and somebody gives you a critique that you didn't ask for, you might want to think about leaving that group. The only type of group that you really want to be in is if you ask for a critique, be willing to take it, but you don't need to take somebody else's opinion. I learned this when I had a offsite studio and someone came in and it was so vivid. I remember the size of this man. He was shorter than me and he walked really fast and he came in and he said, there must be something wrong with you to create such chaotic art. 
and I didn't have a response for him. And I, but I did gather my composure and I said, well, do you like abstract art? He goes, no, not really. And I said, well, that's what I do. So of course, it's going to be somewhat of a mind boggling experience for you because you don't like abstract art. And I said, there's a lot of artists in this building and in this complex that you can find an artist that you relate with. I had to decide that that man's opinion had nothing to do with me. It was all about him. And so when you're in the Facebook group and comments are made about your art and you didn't ask for it, get out of that group. But the point is, be in a Facebook group that has like-minded people and enjoy. And I've met some really wonderful people in Facebook groups that I've connected with that I'm still friends with today. 10. If your art is calling you to explore a different direction that might be different than the direction you're going in, Listen to that voice because there might be something there. There might be a part of you that wants to let out some art ideas that you have suppressed. And I always tell people, and I've mentioned this before on several of my, my podcasts and blogs, that your inner child... If you go back and you try to remember some of the things you loved as a child and the things you've loved to do that you may have suppressed because you had to go into a accounting field or a business field or for me it was project management for a while. I hid some of those inner child voices that were telling me some of the things that I liked to do. But they came out later. They came out when I became a full-time artist. But this point, what I'm trying to say is, this direction that you may be thinking, oh, I don't know why I keep thinking about this, maybe taking you down a journey that you've never gone, but you may discover an area of art that you really are good at and you like to do. Or just the opposite. You may find that you you think you may like to do that, but you you really don't, but there's aspects of it like oil painting. I've never had the desire to oil paint, but I know that people talk about it being such a smooth textures. So that may be something I want to explore down the road. So I hope these 10 steps to starting your art, and these are steps that you can go back and revisit often. It's not something that you just do once. Go back and revisit these steps because you're going to be in a different place at different points in your life and they're going to take on dif different meaning so I hope you do this and again thank you for joining me here and I hope you have a wonderful experience in your art journey and don't ever give up keep going and just know that I care and I love you and I appreciate you being here.